Right, well I'm very pleased to say I'm in the paddock here of Benjafield with one of the gentlemen that was involved in setting up Benjafield back in... 1990. 1990, yes. Could you tell us a little bit about Benjafield and how it's doing? Absolutely. Well, my name's uh, Philip Strickland and I, together with three or four other people, decided to create a new motoring club that was centred around the vintage Bentley car. Uh, the vintage Bentley has a, an incredible history and it's very iconic and it features in all the great spy books and everything and it's a very much a bulldog drummond type of car very quintessentially english and the bentley team was created from the factory to sell cars but primarily to advertise the fact that these cars were almost unbreakable and uh, for 10 years the company existed and they raced at the mall regularly and one out of 10 attempts they won the race five times I'm sorry, it was out of eight attempts. Uh, and they had an ethos about the way the team was run, which meant that the team played as a team and there were no egos, there were no superior uh, people who uh, uh, took the plaudits. And they all played a fair game and they all helped each other out. And we thought that that was a wonderful ethos ourselves to try and recreate that kind of atmosphere. And we managed to do so. We started the club in 1990 and myself, a chap called Stanley Mann, another wonderful wartime pilot called Vaughan Davis, uh, and one or two other people joined in to create the club. And we based the club badge, which has become a, an iconic insignia on its own, uh, on the Cross of St. George, uh, which is surmounted by a Bentley radiator cap. If you have a look at the radiator cap later on, you'll see it's a quick, a quick, quick, quick release cap and we thought that that just summarized the way Bentley went about its business. And so the club formed in, at that time with just 50 members and progressively over the years, we built it up to 85. We, it's an invitation only club and we keep it small and it means that we always get the right crowd and no crowding really. I've heard that before. <laughs> with Brooklands, exactly. Bentleys were hugely successful at Brooklands, of course, but they were also successful internationally both at Le Mans and various other races at Boulogne and elsewhere uh, and the, uh, in the Irish races, the TT races and so on. Uh, and many of the cars that are here today uh, were racing or being driven in that period. Uh, this car is uh, effectively an unrestored 1925 Bentley. It'll be 100 years old in 18 months time. And it's running on most of its original parts as fitted to the car at Cricklewood in North London where they're all built. Uh, and remarkably, it's still going strong. Uh, its driver's slowly fading, but the car's beating him. <laughs> Thank you very much. I haven't counted how many Bentleys there are in the paddock here, but I'm told it's around about 50. Uh, it's more than 50. Yeah. Okay. I'm so sorry. Yes, it's probably nearer 75 Bentleys here altogether. Not everyone is actually racing because they've come down for the buzz, really. Thank you. The, the point I was going to make on the back of that is that just shows how sustainable these cars have been. They're still here, they're still running, they're still working, they're still being driven, they're still racing. And our task, basically looking forward, is to keep this momentum up with the younger generations of drivers, owners and also mechanics. Have you any comments you'd like to add to that? Yes. Uh, well, uh these cars, as you will see when you go around the paddock looking at them, are largely green. And they really are a green car because they have been built for 80, 90, almost 100 years. There is a 100-year-old car here. And they've not been replaced, which means you're not using up the Earth's resources to replace them. And they're a very good example of how you make sustainable engineering and sustainable technology. But there's another feature about these as well, I think, and that is that they... Uh, also exude pleasure when you're driving them and they give pleasure when you're watching them and it's a two-way operation I'm pleased to say most of the people that you pass are waving at you or smiling very few people get grumpy when they see an old Bentley which is a great relief really because my driving is terrible yeah. <laughs> now, I think it's fair to say uh, I totally agree there I was on the ferry yesterday and there were three Bentleys on the ferry with me. And everything stopped when they went by. People were just looking in awe at these old cars. So, now I gather you have to go to um, 
a meeting with the mayor very soon um, and you'll need to start your engine to do that at four o'clock so we w we'll wait until the uh, the four o'clock bell goes okay um, have you got any other thoughts going forward on sustainability or e-fuels e maybe for these vehicles as far as sustainability is concerned I think the important thing is that of course each one of these cars is being driven by somebody who's been very lucky in life very fortunate and they've managed to acquire the resources to buy the car or they've inherited it but one way or another everything moves on and people get old and too infirm to drive them and it, we must make sure that the next generation get behind the wheel and drive these things and uh, take them forward and send the message out that it is a worthy thing to be using antiques in a practical sort of way and particularly in the way that they were designed to be used and it's no use buying a, a, a china teapot and sticking it on the shelf never to use it, it because it's worth ten thousand pounds the bentley car is worth a lot of money because uh, there is a great demand for them and they're not being made anymore but the fact is that most of the people here use them until they almost wear them out and then they rebuild them and then they use them again there's a very very healthy industry in restoring and repairing and maintaining these cars uh, and at least five businesses thrive on just 1600 cars that are left out of the 3022 made so that's remarkable but sustainability going forward of course we are hitting all sorts of things like uh, restrictions on speeds everywhere which does is not a problem uh, but the restrictions on the use of fuel, the kind of fuel we, that's available, that's all becoming very problematic. And the E10 fuel that we're asked to use now uh, doesn't suit these cars at all. They, uh, they suffer and their, their performance deteriorates and they become really just less efficient. Uh, but I understand that there are moves afoot now by Porsche and Paddy Lowe, ex-Mercedes uh, technician, uh, to create new sustainable fuels which are carbon neutral and the experiments are taking place right now and they're proving very successful so my hope is that we'll be able to continue to use the internal combustion engine not just in the Bentleys but in many other makes of car using these sustainable fuels we shouldn't be doing away with the internal combustion engine it's been a marvel of invention and creation and the modern car now, I think, is an absolute genius product, every one of them. There are no really bad cars, uh, and they all perform, of course, and they're even the cheapest, a lot better than a vintage Bentley, which is rather disappointing. <laughs> yeah, it's a very different experience. Absolutely. Okay. Well, Philip, thank you so much for spending time with us. On behalf of Fever, thank you. And have a very nice time with the Mayor tonight, and we'll do a video of you as you start your engine and drive out. Okay? Thank you, very thank, much. You very thank you very much. All the very best to you. And good luck. Good luck. Thank you very much. And good luck in the race. Thank you. Very much. <laughs>